Our humble regards to Mr. S.K. Birla, President of Shikshaitan Foundation, Board of Governors, Honorable Trustees, and four committee members of CBS. We are honored to have the kind presence of Mrs. Ratati Bhattacharya, Secretary General and CEO of Shikshaitan Foundation. Our esteemed panelists for today are Mr. Rahul Bose, Consultant, IBM Global Technologies, and Mrs. Nupur Dutta, Principal, Salt Lake Shikshan Education. We also have students and teachers of Birla High School, thanks to Principal Mrs. Lovely Sagar. Calcutta Business School is a residential institute, keeping in mind the need for management education in Eastern India and being an autonomous institution, it offers AICTE approved PGDM courses designed as per the latest industry needs by an expert team of faculty and advisors comprising of both renowned academicians and industry leaders, and has recently introduced a BBA in business analytics course in association with Macau. And representing Calcutta Business School today as moderator is Sanjeev Biswas, sir, Assistant Professor, Calcutta Business School. And we thank you all for joining us today. I now request Bhattati ma'am to please deliver the welcome address. A warm welcome from Shikshayatin Foundation and also Calcutta Business School. Calcutta Business School is a unit of our foundation. As you know that we are 102 years old and our motto has been to empower lives. We welcome every person who has joined us, for people who are on the panel, uh, Mrs. Nupur Datta, principal of uh, Shikha Niketan, and Mr. Rahul Bose. Mr. Rahul Bose is our faculty and our uh, moderator for the day is Professor Sanjeev Biswas. We started this webinar series, you know, um, last year. Definitely, you know, with COVID, we could not meet physically. So we decided to have such sessions where we can, you know, touch upon many people. And we found that this is one way where, you know, teaching and learning can happen. And we have been pretty successful with this. We started off with college students, and then we have now also have the school students. And we've started with these, uh, you know, career um, coaching and counseling sessions, you know, where we would be talking on different topics to help out the students to choose their lines and whatever they think, you know, for their future, they can opt for these options, whatever they uh, choose to take up. So design thinking, you know, we thought is something, you know, which everyone requires in their life, because this is a skill, this is a skill, you know, which helps you to solve many problems. So design thinking is, again, you know, designing anything, if you have to design your house, the way you would be looking at things, in a similar way in business also, you require to think just exactly what you would be doing for your own house or for your, your classroom or for any, any issues that may, or any challenge they, that may come in your, uh, you know, in front of you and how you can solve that. So we would be waiting for the experts to tell us how you can improve your skill and whether, you know, you would be opting for this career. Thank you once again for joining us and welcome. Senior take a act, look, request, please move down. And let me also tell you a very happy new year to all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, may I now introduce everyone to the panelists of the day? Our first panelist is Mrs. Nupur Dutta, Principal, Salt Lake Shikha Nikita. She has been a beloved teacher at Shri Sistaitan Singles. Having been from the defense background, she has been educated in schools across India and abroad. With a master's in political science with a BA, she has a teaching experience of 29 years in various CBS schools and projects. She has been associated with the British Council organized school assessment and student exchange project. She considers herself a facilitator rather than a teacher and feels happiest whenever she is able to motivate her students. And our second panelist is Mr. Rahul Bose, consultant, IBM Global Technology. 
a mechanical engineer from Jadavpur University and a member from Kipur. His work experience spans over 38 years, including DHEN, Tata Steel, PwC, and IBM. He has, he has been a corporate trainer in several organizations, including DHEN, IBM, Cisco, PwC, IOCL, Barman Lorry, Linde, Tata Metallics, and Ramco. Mr. Bose is a seasoned learning and development professional with a strong in the underpinning of industry background at PHEN and Tata Steel. He has worked in India, Asia Pacific, and in various global groups. He facilitated executive visioning sessions and conferences, including design thinking workshops. Mr. Bose is an IBM certified learning professional, four star learning knowledge facilitator, and certified DISC coach and trainer. Having been the co chairperson of Bengal Chamber of Commerce, he has been a faculty with major universities like Macau and Igno as well. Now I could go on as you know all the students of CBS are all pages for him, but we'll keep it short for now. I now request our moderator, Shundeep sir, to please take the session forward. Thank you, uh, Madam Pal. Good evening, uh, respected uh, Madam Brothati Bhattacharya, our respected panelists for the session, respected uh, faculty members of Calcutta Business School and the faculty members from other schools, institutions and colleges and participants and viewers, those who are watching the video uh, live streaming on uh, Facebook. So it is indeed uh, an initiative of Calcutta Business School to present a panel discussion on contemporary topics uh, every week, if possible every week, so that we can take a note of the developments and practices going all around. Now, as a part of uh, this series, today we are uh, organizing this uh, webinar on design thinking. So design thinking is a term used to represent a set of cognitive, strategic, and per practical processes by which the design concepts are developed. It was started way back in 1960s when, by Harvard Simon uh, to think out of the box, to apply the cognitive uh, abilities of the people, to think from different perspectives, which we call as a diver divergent thinking, to solve different kinds of problems and to design the solutions for unpredictable future. It is, has a close linkage with user experience theory, UX, or customer experience theory. So it has roots on these things and professionals from diverse backgrounds, including architecture and engineering, along with the uh, uh, management uh, professionals, they clap, join hand together to give rise to this kind of concept. And this field uh, popularized by Stanford D School is a growing field and Several organizations and institutions are practicing these skills, uh, even in the colleges and institutions as well. So today, we are really fortunate to have our panel members. They uh, will enlighten us about different applicabilities, different concepts of design thinking. This webinar would be conducted in a kind of conversation mode. So I am Professor Sanjeev Vishwas from Division Science Area. I would be moderating this session along with our respected panel members. And I request those who are watching this uh, live streaming on Facebook, kindly uh, type your questions in the inbox of the Facebook so that we can take up those questions here and can forward to our panel members uh, for el uh, elaborating on those issues. So to start with, first, I would uh, start with Professor Bose, uh, who is a visiting faculty member of Calcutta Business School too. So to start with, sir, I have uh, one question for you to begin the discussion of today's webinar, that last two, th last two three years, we have been seeing rapid changes in the marketplace. I mean, after the advent of uh, COVID-19, the every facets of socio-cultural, psychological, and our day-to-day uh, -day life has been 
tremendously uh, changed with the uh, advent of COVID-19 and all uh, kind of normal practices are now becoming now normal practices. So my question is to you, sir, during this changing time, how does design thinking help in taking, help in taking prudent uh, business decisions? Because we are belonging to a business management community. So my start with this question, during this changing time, how does design thinking help in taking prudent business decisions? Thank you, Professor Viswas, and a very warm evening. Uh, Pre-Republic Day greetings to everyone, including Brototi uh, Bhattacharya, uh, who welcomed all of us, Madhusri, the coordinator, who gave me a call around the afternoon, uh, Dr. Shuvendu Majumdar in absentia, and of course, all the faculty and the very learned people who are on this call. So I'll just start with what is design thinking, as has already been uh, narrated by Professor Shanjib Bishwash. So design thinking is a process. So he being from operations knows it so well, uh, but as we practice it in industry, I'll just try to explain in a few words. It is about knowing the customer's mind. And whenever we hear the word design, for example, if you date back to ISO 9001, long back there used to be a clause called 4.3 and 4.4. So there was design that whatever is in the mind of the customer, needs to come across and play into your deliverable. So for example, uh, somebody says that increase my ticketing sales, my portal is not too attractive. So and in these days, nobody flies unless there's an emergency or there's a compelling need to fly. So ticket selling, when times were good, it used to be easy. People used to get customers normally, an Indigo or a Vistara. Today, it's difficult unless it's very easy for somebody, one will not. So that is one example. Now, the way airlines industry has in mind, if I try to understand in my own language, and if I can give a solution, which is exactly suiting to his empathetic need, that is where design thinking plays a big role. So I'll just start off the discussion and uh, Madam Nupur Dotto and the other panelists can also come in. Uh, at this time, so I just thought of setting the context with what whatever uh, I thought would be sensible to sort of frame this discussion. So here's a, and this is what I had. Uh, so enterprise design thinking. Now, you know, it it is not anybody's patented. So, so for example, uh, you heard of Kaizen, you heard of voice of the customer. I'm trying to be slightly operations management today, uh, taking away from my HR hat. So in my technology role in BHL or wherever I have been, I have seen that people work to please themselves. Now here, we are flipping it around. Times have changed. Every work must be valued by your client or customer. So there are three principles which guide us. Number one, if you see on the top that yellow polka dot, it's on user outcome. So for example, if it's hotel business, if it's hospitality, if it's manufacturing, am I really generating a product that will be non-abrasive, it will be noiseless? So what is the user wanting? Now we had this earlier also, not that design thinking gives us something new, but it packages things in a very different way, which, which the world has liked and leading corporates have adopted. Now one is user outcome. The second is don't have silos, so take a guy from marketing, take a person from operations, take a person from human resources and try to keep on, uh, I mean, thinking in very different, in different directions. For example, we say that, you know, people are twice born. So some people are twice born. Leaders are twice born, managers are once born. So here is the concept that you let, let multiple minds think. Finally, do not take a template of success as you know, this is what I have done. So maybe I got success in this way in 2020. In 2022, this will not give me success. So this is one, uh, and it was pretty much, I mean, if you move back to Deming and all the leading TQM thinkers, they also said the same, but maybe this clicked in the mind that restless reinvention, which means 
do not, if you have come first in the class, maybe this is the last time you have come first in the class. So do cast away that mold, try to learn something new the next time. Otherwise you will be in the success trap. The other thing is the loop. For example, we are observing what the client or the customer needs, reflect on it, and then, then deliver. If you observe and make, you are an order taker. You don't add any value. If you observe and reflect, you are into an analysis paralysis mode. If you observe and if you reflect and make, you are flying blind. So it is good to go through this loop. Whatever are your, uh, the way you see the client's needs or the user's needs, it can be a child going to the school, it can be a college going MBA student whom I uh, deal every day. What is their need? Now, do I speak their language? So whoever is your customer, just try to observe, reflect, make. Finally, there are problems. For example, how do I increase my ticketing? How do I uh, increase my top line? How do I make my supply chain? You know, let's have less vendors. We have one or two 80, 20 rule. So these are hills. You have to cross these problems. To do this, we do a process of playback. Play it back to a team, a very non-threatening your own team. So they'll say, hey, this is where you're going, right? I don't think this is quite good. So it involves brainstorming, which we can come in the next part of the discussion. But this was the basic principles. And finally, have the user as your guinea pig. Have a sponsor user who will say, okay, I find this part good, but could you tweak that one because this is not in alignment with my company culture. So I'll hand it back to uh, Professor Biswas with a little opening statement that in the in the recent more, more often than not, so for example, whoever thought that things have to be virtualized, sellers used to creep that unless I meet a client, I cannot sell. That used to be the hardest bastion. You can do operation by, you know, the other day I was in Khadi Gramujo to buy a piece of something. Yes, and I am a lover of Central Calcutta. So I have been born there, a little bit of a Kolkata uh, Chodo freak, if you may say, once upon a time. I don't stay there anymore. But then there was a trial room. He said, Dada, the trial room is closed. And I understood why it is closed. I was a 16th customer at five o'clock in the evening, around this time. So they didn't have 16 people also to buy. So the market is drying up. Not Khadi Gramojik is not a great example, but Amazon has sort of, you, you can do a trial by doing design thinking. So you can put in a shirt or you can put in some trousers and fit yourself and maybe it will be hand delivered to you over. Now, this is not magic, but I thought, you know, I was very uh, curious that if the trial room has closed and because there's Corona all over, you can't have a trial room. So how you can circumvent, maybe design thinking is an answer. So I, I, I'm sorry, I took a little bit more time, but I thought that I'll set the context that it is for, for business. When everything is virtualized, you don't like touch, you want selling also to be experiential. So this may be a great way of working from now that we can work virtually across diverse teams, use Mural as a tool like we did, and you know, get a plethora of good ideas and the best idea or the cluster of best ideas click. So I'll stop here and uh, definitely there'll be other valuable adults. Back to you, Mr. Pro Dr. Biswas. Thank you, uh, Professor Bose. Uh, you have rightly set up the tone that today we are facing so much of disruption on one hand, and on the other hand, we are experiencing industry 4.0 and we are uh, moving towards society 5.0. So it's all becomes human-centered uh, approach, human-centered applications of the technology and embracing the disruptions. And really, really, we don't have any time to fail. We cannot fail after this now normal situation. We just cannot fail because we don't have that sufficient time to restore back the situation. The situation is so dynamic and so ever-changing that every time we need to think and we need to come out with out-of-box thinking so that we can move ahead of the curve always. Always there is a pressure, time-based competition. And as you correctly said that learning the mind of the customer. So every time we have to learn the mind of the customer 
even when the customer doesn't know what he or she wants. So that is the job of design thinking, taking clue from this uh, point. I would now move to Madam uh, Dutta to know that having said that design thinking is so much important in the present context, in the present scenario and for the future, how does one hone up the skills of design thinking? A very warm evening to all the panelists. Uh, to Brototi ma'am, Madhushri ma'am, Professor Bose, and everyone present here. Uh, design thinking, I would say, I was just so mesmerized, uh, you know, hearing the points put up by Dr. Bose, uh, Professor Bose. Uh, it led me to think that the level in uh, the level, you know, of your talk is practically so high up in the level of the education ladder that what we do in the school front, because I have the background, uh, you know, of the school education part, here the things have to be brought down to a very, you know, the level of ground zero as we call it. The first thing I would like to say here is, this pandemic situation, we have been hearing the word pandemic, I don't know, for the umpteenth time probably over the last two years. But this situation has led us to develop, probably, it is my personal view, the coinage of a new term for this design thinking. It is research and development, I would call it in our level. This research and development so the higher level of this research and development will be design thinking, of course. But, sir, what and if uh, uh, to the audience also, I would say this is something which has been going over for the past many, many years. So, this is something which is, to my understanding, is of course a new concept in today's conditions, under today's circumstances, because we are dealing with something which we never thought of. Suddenly in the year, uh, month of March 2020, uh, uh, we were thrown into something very unknown. We didn't know what the pandemic is. We didn't know what COVID is. And the most important part is, we didn't know how to deal with children who were three plus age how to tackle them, how not to let them to come to school yet carry on with the education process. How not to let a class 10 student or a student of class 12 come to school and ask him to carry out his practical classes through O labs. It was something, a very new concept which we learned to cope up with through trial and error. And this situation has led us to pose various queries in our minds and probably design thinking is something which includes a few steps. The first I would uh, uh, think it, it will be empathize to respond or to research to the needs of the students. And mind you, sir, it is not only with the students with whom we are related to, at least in the school level. Most importantly, it is the parents whom we have to satisfy. So here, when I am taking a three-year-old, three-plus child to my school and let him in, in the class, uh, um, you know, interacting with the teachers and all, I'm not dealing with the parent for at least three hours. The moment I go online, it is the parent with whom I am dealing. I'm practically teaching A, B, C, and D to the parent, not to the child. I have to satisfy the parents. Now here the design thinking process, what was thrown to us and let us think that first let us pacify the parents and then we come to the child. So this was our first step when we come to the school level. Next, we felt how to define the problem. 
a very you know uh, it may seem very uh, crudeish to bring out these problems ma'am we have only one device at home so how do i make my child attend the class as well as i go and open a open my shop or if it is the lockdown pro, uh, period ma'am then how do i um, you know uh, check my device how do i go for the connectivity because there is a network issue now these were some of the ground zero problems ground zero things which led us to you know new process undertaking processes of research and development i said as i said and this leads to design thinking for in our level next for example we come to the assumption of some challenges of course we face challenges in the school level of different kind then there are there are practically you know i would say there are stages of challenges which we face one set of challenges refers to the 3 plus to around 6 to 7 plus the other is the middle school something which we can more or less scope next come the challenges of the children of class 9 to class 12 how do we make them ready for the public examinations will we have the public examinations if yes then how to go about it if no then what is the uh, solution so these are the problems which we have been facing which we have been probably not only us the world throughout they have been researching on it they have been designing the plans on it and i must say that cbse since i am a part of the cbse system it has done a wonderful job you know setting this design thinking process into play next again when we have the processes in front of us or the solutions in front of us given by any other organization or you know uh, developed by ourselves also another problem which comes out is when we try out our solutions will it be a uniform solution design thinking will it be a uniform process for everyone or should it differ according to age according to gentry according to you know the level of the students the iq level of the students here are the you know issues which i felt in the ground level we had to face and here design thinking here research and development as i said uh, like you know the simple word the simple terminology which i would like to use for design thinking in our level would be research and development the trial and error method the, you know the old age trial and error method which we have been trying out so there are various other points also to discuss i would uh, uh, like to hand it over to mr sanjeev biswas sir please carry on i'll be here to you know put forward my other views after the other panelists other speakers say thank you, thank you so, so much, much madam for uh, translating the meaning of design thinking and the mm -hmm. requirement uh, very lucidly correctly you have taken us to the root of the design thinking though the concept is not new but perhaps this covid 19 has accelerated the focus on design thinking and uh, it can be easily said that the necessity of design thinking lies in the problem of disruption wherein we have to empathize we have to respond and do a research and development to bring down the problem to translate the problem into a ground zero attainable and uh, solvable problem solution for solvable problem statements and thereby trial and error approach research and development would help us to think out of the box to reach to the feasible or achievable solutions so you have correctly said and uh, uh, it tempts me to ask you another question ma'am that having but before you do that i i i have something to say i i think what uh, nubur has uh, said very nicely that here our customers are uh, you know when we talk about customers in business you know we are looking at what um, mr rahul bose has said but here our customers are were our students 
and our customers were mothers because we have to satisfy their needs. Hmm. So I think it has been said very nicely at the school level, how one has solved the problem. I think things, she has made it very easy, lucid to understand for school students. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Biswas. Please yeah. start. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma as I said it very correctly, ma'am has also pointed out one very pertinent thing. Sometimes we do not have proper control over the customer. Sometimes who are otherwise our not direct customer, but the influential of the customer, like the, she said about the parents. I mean, here, apparently it looks like the process is about the students, but since the school level, the parents are having major role to say, major role to play. So design thinking is all about the customer. So it tempts me to ask you another question, madam, yeah. that you have said a very uh, correct example of institution, because I also do feel that if you want to hone up these skills at the matured level, the, the effort must be start at the ground level. That is the school level at very early age. And this tempts me to ask you another question that what are the activities that an institution can do to inculcate this design thinking among the students at the very early age, where it is supposed to that, that the students of very early age are full of ideas are full of uh, creativity among in their minds. So how an institution can play a role to, hon uh, to inculcate this design thinking among the students? So here I would like to differentiate between two, uh, you know, very broad sections. One is the, now we are using this term, rather uh, say five years back, we never thought of this term online and offline. So here again, the activities will be differentiated on the basis of these two modes. Offline, it is something which uh, I would say the five-year-old at this point of time doesn't know at all because he got admitted in the age of three plus for he doesn't know what a school building or his classroom looks like. So here I will not start on this uh, segment at this point. In the online mode, sir, which even now a three plus year old child has become used to because earlier, you know, he was uh, habituated to using his father's or mother's uh, cell phone for playing games only. But now it is the other way around. It is uh, earlier we used to ask a child not to use a mobile phone. We used to penalize students for bringing phones to school. And now we are pressurizing the parents, please give your phone to your child. So things have you know, turned absolutely topsy-turvy. So here uh, the activities will be different in different segments. In the pre-primary classes, for example, I'll just give you a very, again, I would say for, uh, you know, your level of students, it might be very crudish, but here, for example, taking the roll call of the students, the attendance of the students. In senior classes, what happens, sir? We just online, when the classes are going on, we check it out, you know, on the uh, list of attendees and we just mark them present. That's all, whether the student has put on his video or not. Sometimes teachers are not, uh, you know, able to complete the entire process very systematically because they have to run with the syllabus. But in the primary section, what happens, especially in the pre-primary ones, for a student, having his name called out by the teacher and he replying, yes, ma'am, and the teacher also, you know, responding, very good, beta, good morning, child, how are you? This very interaction is very important for the child. The child immediately tells his mother, who is sitting beside him, Ma, my teacher, see, she said my name. So that feeling of importance is very important for us teachers who, are, who know that I may be utilizing 20 minutes of the 40 minute class time, just calling out the student's name, but that very interaction, that very, you know, feeling of uh, uh, 
a student teacher relationship develops through this activity just you know showing a for apple and b for bat for b and all this fine it will go on a child will learn because here in uh, when we had the offline classes it was the teacher's responsibility to you know uh, go through the entire academic processes but now along with the teacher it is the parent who is also equally performing the role of a teacher so here these very small small interactions when we have the viva classes uh, you know in in the now what we have been experiencing is when we ask the child to you know when the teacher shares the screen as and ask the child to note down the answers and all the child does it some children after at least one and half year of training you know on working online they have become very smart they take the screenshots and said ma'am over so the screenshot thing is another another part of this research and development or design thinking on the part of the children i must say why waste time writing the copying the same answer let, let me take a screenshot so this is another activity which i feel the teacher should appreciate because it is his own idea which is working so when this part has been done we have to innovate what we do we go for a face to face interaction with the child okay fine you have taken the screenshot you take the screenshot we are only encouraging but then let us go for a viva section let us go for a question answer a face to face interaction with the children this has become very important in the online section if we go for the offline one for example we celebrate van mahotsava in the month of july every year so here what happens is when in a, when the students are in the school we call them we take them now to our garden the school garden and you know let them plant saplings or they bring saplings and let them plant in their own names and all these things happen we have to translate this outdoor activity in the online segment now how do we go about it we ask children to take a sapling of the uh, from their parents plant it in a you know flower pot on their terrace and just send a picture to us at least something is better than nothing so let the child have you know have a little mud on his hands let him get the feel of the earth that is how you know things again as i said sir this is a trial and error method so this goes on and on and we have to innovate ourselves we have to put up innovations as per the demand of the situation so it is not you know something which we can just write down and go by rote every day we are inventing we are discovering rather something or the other just to keep the child you know uh interested to keep the child uh, grounded so that when they come back to us again in the offline mode they do not feel out of the world sir thank you ma'am uh, it's so nice to hear these kind of small examples because uh, it is said that day to day small change or small innovations which is known as kaizen leads to a major breakthrough change in the system although without having any kind of uh, trouble in innovating the things and you have quite correctly said that it is lies on the everyday innovation and i will get back to you ma'am and uh, summarize all these things thank and you sir you have correctly said that this offline to online outdoor activity to online so that we all are experiencing and we are organizing uh, webinars in place of seminars we are right. organizing convocation online that yes. is the self we are having the self proctored remote examinations our students are doing ravindra jayanti at their home and we are just using technology to make it as live as possible so these all these things have happened during last two years just uh, just to uh, add uh, one interesting one more interesting thing sir uh, just a few days back we have the national sahodaya conference in gwalior now i did not go to gwalior it was all online and you know 
what science and what do this is design thinking even the auditorium the help desk was a virtual one people yes. moving around in the auditorium that's a virtual reality so these this is design thinking so we have to move according to the times so uh, thank you so much so thank you very, sir thank uh, you so much so this is a very pertinent issue and examples that madam has uh, shared and very nicely explained now taking forward this discussion i am very curious to know from professor bose that uh, the first thing is that what is the cultural shift and how one can manage i mean how one can adopt this design thinking to improve his or her personal productivity thank you so much and uh, <clears throat> when i was listening to madam i was really uh, humbled because you know this is the language i hear in my house when my spouse teaches a small kid so i could i could relate that the clients would be the parents whereas i spoke at maybe at infinity level so you brought brought the whole thing leveled and this being calcutta business school and sri shikshatan and so nicely stated that you know the problems of a child how you sort of internalize that and give a solution which is palatable to all now we don't do anything different in corporate it's only that my lingo is slightly you know I, i'll talk of ticket sales and supply chain and logistics but basically you and me the school and the industry we are in the same boat it's the pandemic now similar as i said that selling used to be so difficult unless you meet a customer physically you can't sell that used to be the hardest bastion now in it and consulting we were we were like you said that uh, virtual auditorium we had a tool called the second life way back in ibm i think 2005 so if you now google second life maybe it still is there or is it, it has died so people in it and consulting they used to work vicariously imaginary they used to create avatars like you see this movie by uh, the famous director i forget the name somebody will provide me so avatar if you see that movie by james i i forget the director's name or any spielberg movie which will you know so people like kalpo lok if i may say people like imagination now today it has so happened that imagination has become reality now a child possibly he'll not like getting back to the classroom anymore because of maybe he will i mean it opened up a little bit in november and december but then again at bad luck would have it we were back again in the third wave now here's one more thing which i wanted to sort of uh contribute to the discussion and so well framed by uh madam nupur datto and madam brototi was so supportive because you know when it's a child uh how do you make education come alive for example he is writing on a khata or an exercise book now writing has that due diligence or that labor if you type like i know my spouse she teaches a child he likes to type he doesn't like to write so then he has to be told that you write then you take a pdf now taking a pdf so at every stage you know you have to understand what are the pains the child has to go through and he's a small one maybe the mobile is in not in his account so we have something and i'll talk a little bit of principle you know the way design thinking is and i'll take the question of utsav i just wanted you to hold on for a while so what we do and the question was how do we improve relationships so i think madam has answered that the key word is empathy so if you feel like that other person you are in his boot so what we do and this was based on a case study which we give ibmers to do and i don't think it will be out of place to mention at least the three steps one is understand let's put the word client aside it talks of you know some relations you cannot be slotted in a client so let's understand for whom does the bell toll is it the student or his parent or her parent so empathy is something and i'll just show you one empathy map how we do maybe you can incorporate that in your uh, you know and many of you do like sensitive people like madam nupur datto you have already felt the pains and you wanted a bit of both that the child smells the ground as well as does things virtually 
So there is a five by tool. I'm not getting into it again, a drill. Now, after you have done the empathy map, think very hard. So you understand what is the pain of the uh, of the of the person whom you are trying to address. And let, let me put that name as a customer, let's say, or an end user, if you like that name. So explore potential solutions. So here is different thinking comes in. I may have a different thinking. Dr. Biswas comes from an operations background. I used to be in operations way back, then went into learning and knowledge, but my brain ticks that way. Somebody would be good in a marketing sense of the brain. So put every, every, every gender, every person together, let's evaluate and select the best idea. And not because you know it's best, it's best for the client or the user. And then you develop your case. So this was one thing which I wanted to just mention that this is the way we follow. And if you tell me what we do, when we do, uh, when we talk of relationships, how do I better my productivity? So I would again come back here that this is the principles on which enterprise, with the way maybe Herman said and companies have adopted it in their own ways. So one thing to do is we have a left brain and a right brain. So now many people like a child will not say that, you know, I have a pain. It expresses differently, or in our case, a client, sometimes he may not say that, and that is a bad uh, consultant who will have to go and what is your pain, what is your pain? A good doctor, if you go, he will listen to you five minutes, like a, you know, dead eyes fish, and then he'll say, lie down, and he'll put one whack on your stomach and it'll pain. So he exactly knows what is actually bothering you. So something we feel which is our right brain, something we do. For example, the child will say, this is disturbing, the screen is flickering, or my mobile is not uh, good. So I'm just trying to, you know, uh, get into the shoes of a learning or, a, or a, you know, a young person who's trying to learn. So in, in case of our clients, normally they will not say, but you know, business is hurting. So something he'll say, so create an empathy map. So this is one lady called Sarah, and she has problems, people are leaving that company. So what maybe certain things she says, certain things she does, she thinks and feels. So I will sort of take it as a one step when I respond to Dr. Bishash, that if you can empathize and if you can understand that why is this person behaving the way he is, I think the route is over. You have won the battle. And then comes what, what are the steps by which you will sort of, uh, you know, make that relation solid? Uh, how will you take it forward? So I have seen in this virtual world, possibly people have developed better relations. You will agree with me. When we were physical, maybe we did not value, you know, the time. But now in, I have seen so many families, they have virtual meets. So you understand, you know each other, you want to get in touch, but alas, you can't meet. So necessity is the mother of invention. So what I would say is empathy, as Madam Nupur Dr. has said, this is the first step. Then you go on to ideation, think of what could be the scenarios in which I could possibly help out and then play it out. That is where the rubber hits the road. There is a difference between thinking and doing. I will take that as a difference. What you think doesn't really play out in actuality, but that is life. And then you get a feedback, you get even better. So I, I'll just stop here because I thought uh, maybe this responded to your question and to Utsav's question, let me take it. So Utsav, uh, we used to have something known as a waterfall model of planning. Like, you know, when we had the planning commission, now we don't have, we have a Niti Aayog. So I'm talking a little bit, you know, along different lines. So what is cast in stone? Because planning was supposedly a, very serious function, time and money and resources were budgeted for it. But today you don't know that tomorrow there'll be a wave four or three and a half or three one quarters. So my, is my planning good? So we have an agile method. Now, again, uh, I'll be accused of, you know, throwing corporate jargons, but to tell you the truth, design thinking takes in agile thinking, but it, it has a heuristic, which is good, which I think will take care of the agile and the waterfall way of thinking to answer your question in a very complicated way, Utsav. 
Uh, and let me know if that does does or does not answer you. Back to Dr. Biswas. Thank you so much, sir. In uh, you have pointed out many things that which I would be <clears throat> mentioning during the summarization. But only thing I can say, taking clue from this beautiful discussion, I have personally learned many things. That perhaps design thinking can be called as a liberal thinking being necessitated due to the requirement keeping end user at central point to design the empathetic solution to create an experience that form a present story future. So perhaps in a summary form, we can uh, summarize the entire thing in a design thinking. In my opinion, my personal viewpoints, I can summarize your talk. So now uh, the question which uh, Professor Bose has answered and perhaps that enticed me to ask another question to him, back to back question. I'm sorry, but the question is, given this scenario, given this requirement and given this understanding, we all understand that this is a requirement. Perhaps this has been a requirement, but now the situation has taught us or the requirement has taught us to learn and to realize this requirement more. Now, having said that, how does this design thinking help in creating professional competencies and what are the job prospects uh, there in the market? Because you being the expert in the field, uh, in the uh, learning and teaching and training development and recruitment field, and so much of experience you have. So I am tempted to ask these questions on behalf of all the students who are participating in this webinar. Okay, so uh, I mean, thank you for the question and uh, thank you so much for, you know, the questions are more important than the answers. In any seminar, I always believe this because I may not have the answer. But what I know is user experience, design thinking, we have a studio in IBM Bangalore in eighth floor or in, I think now in DLF also there because of COVID it got. So everywhere, you know, clients are given an experience that you come here, you see what we can do for you. And they do it online. They co-create with the client or the customer, which was never, never done in a conservative company like IBM. Maybe in an Accenture it was. They're slightly more liberal. I mean, I'm not getting into. Again, I'll prevent myself because uh, Madam Nupur Dotto has shown me the ground level. So I'll stick to the ground. How it can help a job is user experience. For example, that Khadi Gramoj. trial high. So because the guy, there's no guy to, you know, put a shirt on and say whether my uh, I fit in my trousers or my shirt. So if Amazon today has done this, he can sort of profile you, your body shape and give a shirt or a pant. So I think that is one job created. So basically, and you said it in the beginning, uh, Dr. Viswas, that user experience. So people want user experience. So everybody, whether it's a Chanel, at the top end who's into the luxury market or whether it's a IT shop like, you know, IBM or TCS who's trying to, you know, get an automation or something done or a school. So everywhere who's a guy who can sort of virtualize things, can see in three dimensions, can create a virtual reality, if I may say, they are the, those skills are now hot in demand. So I'll, I'll not go into the job description, what it entails, what salary it gives you, but user experience, this tribe in retailing, in branding, mainly in marketing, but also in operations. So maybe you have to you know, do a proof of concept, we say a POC to a client. Many client will say, let me just have a look. Now, now it requires a great amount of effort to do it. For example, somebody tells you, Okay, can you show me what a virtual classroom will look like? I want the touch feel, you know, like we sat in the benches. It's so difficult to do it. Now one who can do it is really the master of it. Now to do it, he must have done that empathy map. He must have done that ideation. He must have played it out with the sponsors and the users, and he must have got feedback before he did. So it's a very thorough sort of, uh, you know, process. Not that because we are talking design thing today, so we are saying design thinking, design thinking 50 times, but even it was anything else, if it has got something to do with the client and mainly jobs in retail, in branding, you have a visualizer, uh, you have design thinking specialists, all our trainings, 
are done through a tool in Mural. So for example, 50 people join from Dublin, Dubai, Delhi, Bangalore, wherever, Calcutta. How will I take their ideas in? So I'll break them into groups. For example, this Zoom, or we use WebEx, we break them into five rooms. You are given a problem. So they come out with a solution. They work on a tool called Mural. So why have all these murals, Slack, why have they proliferated? Because we can't touch each other. So not that they weren't there. In the European world or the Western world, they were there. But India becoming a great learner is now on top of it. So I think the job seen in India for somebody who knows design thinking principles, more importantly, somebody who can actually perform a design thinking workshop or do something, uh, mainly in the terms of user experience, there is a plethora of portfolio and jobs. To answer a very broad brush without getting into salaries and location and where the job is. Thank you so much, sir, for enlightening. And I can easily make out uh, from your background itself that where lies the difference of traditional thinking and design thinking. And it is easily evident from your uh, virtual background that one must not la uh, try to uh, climb up the ladder. One must not focus only on studies. But the whole idea is to innovate something and there lies the bulb is on all the time. Now, understood from uh, taking clue from your uh, uh, thought process and the requirement, it is said that as early as we start, uh, we can reach to that level. So. Now I take up the questions to Madam that uh, being a school leader, what is your message that how the schools which are at the ground zero level and the college like us, how do, do these schools and higher institutions should plan to uh, implement the design thinking as a part of the daily process seamlessly so that there is no such gap from schools, school to college, college to industry. How does, as a school leader, what is your thought process? So this is something which I have been advocating for a long time in the various institutions I have been attached to. Uh, again, here I would like to, you know, uh, divide the entire uh, gamut of students into two groups. Till class eight, it is something like, you know, they are within the, uh, absolutely within the boundaries of the school wall, as we say. Nine onwards, what I feel is in the present, under present circumstances, in the present scenario, from class nine onwards, students are usually 14 plus, 15 plus of age. They need to be exposed to institutions like yours for the sole purpose that at this age, what we find is students are totally confused, you know, as to which stream they would like to opt for, because here two types of pressures also work on them. One is the peer pressure. My friend is planning to go for science, so I'll also run for science, whether he's capable or not. That is number one. And secondly, of course, as we, it, it has been our, you know, probably I should say the Indian parental mental setup, because I myself being a parent, uh, I would like to term it uh, that way, that we have the parental pressure on the students also. Dr. Echele, Dr. Hawata Uchit. So that sort of thing. So now, of course, scenes are changing. I'm not getting into that discussion. Now students are having their own ideas. Uh, I have students of class eight saying, ma'am, we want to go for fashion designing. So what are the institutes we would like to uh, please suggest? What are the institutes we should go for? What type of you know, tutorials we should undertake? Because I want to go into that field. So that is something else. So here, what we suggest is what, and I would rather advocate, in fact, I've been doing so, that we go for career counseling sessions. I would not term it as, you know, career counseling as such. At least the students should be exposed to various, you know, fields of studies. It is not only career. It, the child may not be career minded. He might, see, uh, we have, 
we are under the CBSE and CBSE has purely stated that there should not be any streams as such. In fact, our uh, previous chairman has coined the term open the basket, where students are offered all subjects, all types of subjects. A, a student op, uh, opting for physics can go in for history also, just like we have in the foreign universities. So we have started, CBSC is a very innovative board, I must say, and you know, they have uh, this design thinking into them and they have been incorporating the new uh, ideas and all innovative skills in full force. So here we have students in my school, we have students who have taken opted for physics as well as history. So during the counseling, when we ask them, well, why have you done so? Because, and the, one of the students, I mean, and I love to remember his statement. He said, ma'am, physics will be my profession, but history is my passion. So if I get a student, if I teach my younger brother history, I would be the happiest. It will make me happy. But then of course, I won't take up history as a profession. I, I love physics, so I would go for that. So these terms when in our school days, like we had this term career counseling, but here I would say, you know, sir, colleges like you, you come because you have so many subjects under your purview. So you come out to us, conduct sessions with the children, children get exposed to new ideas. So that is how, you know, by the time that class nine boy or girl reaches class 11, he or she has his, uh, you know, way clear cut out. He knows what to take up as a profession. She knows what to take up as a passion. So these are th some things which, you know, bridges the school and the college. And now I find students, I'm not talking about this pandemic or this, I find students who have been through this pandemic situation and who have gelled so well with certain subjects which we did not take up in school. So this is all the result of webinars like you are conducting today. The, you know, the sessions, the online sessions, because online sessions, I mean, students can easily attend, students and parents also, they can easily attend it. It will not cause them any transportation cost. So sitting at home, you know, under the blanket on also they can do so. But the point is the ideas come to them in a very lucid way and they can, you know, uh, transform those ideas into reality. So here the bridging the gap has already started and it of course depends upon the, you know, the school heads as to how to channelize these resources. So I would love to have these now, of course, we are, you know, we have lessened a bit because of so many, um, you know, our constriction restrictions, rather, I would say, as for their exams and all. But these sessions are something which is a necessity for this section of the students. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, giving these answers in a very crisp and very thought provoking way. As a matter of fact, your answer just takes me to my childhood days. My father wanted me to be a, a very good at mathematics, so to be an engineer kind of. My uncle wants me to do that. I was very passionate about Bengali literature. I was thinking to pursue my career in Bengali literature only. But later, the peer pressure told me that if you carry the uh, carry on your career in the Bengali literature and being so good in mathematics and uh, how you can establish your uh, profession or your uh, future. And I was also very good at biology. So my father wanted me to become a doctor, but I was a little bit scared about the blood. Then I thought when I was sitting for joint entrance examination that why to write the correct answers? Because if I get selected, then Perhaps my father would uh, enforce me to go for doc medical science. And I am being a person who doesn't like uh, blood, all, the, all kinds of things, because I was unaware of the situations. So I thought that doctor means cutting the human bodies and bloods, all these things would be some horrific things would happen. 
So I uh, just for the pressure of my father, I sat for the joint interest examination. And for a one and a half hour, I sat there idle without writing answer, seeing at the others who are writing answers and thinking about the answer. But the questions were known to me. But now I can think that if I could uh, go back to the timeline to that ages, and perhaps if design thinking or this COVID-19 has happened at the, those particular point of time, then I could have uh, shaped my career in a different way. But nevertheless, you have to correctly touch base and uh, pointed out very important issue that that's the whole thing is basically the curriculum is changing shape. The liberal studies are coming up in a more uh, prominent way. And as our national uh, new education policy is also highlighting the choice based career system, the kind of flexibility in selecting the courses, so as you correctly said, open the bucket. That means open all the basket. Allow the in fact, in fact, sir, I would just like to add one more interesting thing. It means it is just, you know, the students are here, I know. But here, you know, on the teacher's level, we sometimes uh, just joke amongst ourselves. We have a mixed section. We called it section M. We have termed it as section M. Here, what do we have? We have students who have physics, history, psychology. It, I mean, we ourselves are confused at times that we ask ourselves that a bachelor ta kothai jabe oki engineering join debe na nite boshbe we ourselves don't have the answers neither do the children they said ma'am we love the subject we want to study the ones which we get good marks in we will opt for that that is also one form of design thinking i feel for the student because they have been given the choice yeah. and they are utilizing it to the hill and I, res I yes. respect and I salute those parents who have put their students in their mixed section. They have given the full liberty to their children that they I can want go thank for you. I would like to thank you that you have actually started this mixed section. You need a lot of courage to do that, Nupur, and you've done it. Uh, I, you, I think I must thank you that you uh, have taken this because you have really helped these students. Yes, they will take up some career. You, we don't have to worry about that. Students really right. know, you know what they want, you know. So nothing to worry about that. But you've given them this platform. For that, I thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's been a pleasure working with you also, and you have been a great encouragement to me. Thank you so <laughs> it's much. It's our pleasure. <laughs> that nobody knows, you know, here. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I did it all the time. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, we, we have been colleagues, you know. Um, Sanupur was my colleague. So, uh, so definitely, much. I also enjoyed. Okay. Thank you, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So, uh, I would love to continue the discussion for hours after hours because this is such a nice discussion. I have had the opportunity to listen to Professor Bose earlier also. I'm a great admirer of Professor Bose because of his lucid explanations and vast knowledge. Today, I have the opportunity to listen to Madam. I would love to listen to Madam again and again in different occasions and sharing your best practices because you see, the, if you look at the sustainable development goals of United Nations, it all talks about the development of the ground level. Because today, if we focus at the ground level, tomorrow we can build our society, tomorrow we can build our nation, and most importantly, we can uh, develop every, pos uh, every uh, possible things we, we can develop. So it's very nice that you have explained the way now, uh, before we take up the questions uh, from the audience, uh, as a refresher, I would request Madam Madhusipal to run a very short video of our beautiful campus. Again, this is a design thinking. Even people have not uh, visited our campus. We are trying to give them an exposure to our beautiful campus, which we are proud of. So Madam, please. You are welcome to Calcutta Business School. Center of Excellence, centered on excellence. It all started in the year 1920, when some eminent industrialists of Kolkata founded the Marwari Balika Vidyalaya. Later, in 1954, Sri Shikshathan School was founded, and in 1955, Sri Shikshathan College came into being with the objective of further propagating quality education to girls. All these institutions have continued to excel under the management of the Shikshathan Foundation. 
It has been guided by industrialists like President Mr. S. K. Birla, Director Emeritus, Birla Brothers Private Limited, Mr. Siddharth Birla, Vice President. Mr. G.K. Khaitan, Trustee and President of Shikshayatin College, Mr. Aris Goinka, Trustee and MD of Imami Group and many other reputed industrialists. The Secretary General of the Foundation is Mrs. Brothuti Bhattacharya. Greetings. I would like to speak a few words about our institution, the Shikshayatin Foundation. The year was 1920 when some of my forefathers uh, thought that female education needed to be propagated much more actively than was the custom in those days. And we donated from our family two buildings in the heart of Bada Bazaar uh, for, the girl, for the girl's child to be educated there. That institution is still working. The latest addition to our bouquet of institutions has been the Calcutta Business School, which was started a few years ago uh, on a 15-acre plot of land and uh, not very far away from IIM Calcutta. Calcutta Business School offers an AICTE-approved, autonomous, two-year full-time <laughs> residential program on postgraduate <laughs> diploma in management majoring in subjects like finance, marketing, IT, operations and human resource. But it's the unique cluster of courses that sets it apart. Interactive and intuitive games like management game and stock market simulation game. It also puts heavy emphasis on data handling and business analytics and uses databases and software like CMIE Prowess, MetaStock, R and SAP. Kolkata is the city of joy. It is the cultural capital of India, a city which has its soulful embodiment of culture, love, mystery, respect and enthusiasm. A city that upholds a perfect juxtaposition between the old world and the modern one. It has given us many Nobel laureates over the years. It has iconic institutes like the Calcutta University, the National Library, Presidency University, Bisho Bharati, IIM Calcutta and many such legendary institutes. Calcutta Business School's AICTE-approved PGDM program is carrying forward this rich legacy of Kolkata. Thank you. And perhaps as a result of design thinking at Calcutta Business School, we have also included few new age curricular uh, specializations in the area of analytics, rural management, entrepreneurship and family business, and even in education management. So we are also experiencing design thinking and it has become a part and parcel of our daily life. Every day we are living with that. Now is the time to take questions. Why can, I am expressing our sincere thanks to all the dignitaries who, at, who are attending these sessions, educators and uh, respected persons who are attending this session. So I am now making this session open for a few questions that you might want uh, you might want to ask with our respected panelists. You can type in the chat box or you can raise your hand so that we can allow. So if you can write in the chat box or uh, these questions which you would like to ask our respected panelists, so we can take up a few questions before we go for a formal uh, closing uh, part of this beautiful webinar.
So nevertheless, uh, uh, the session, although it is about to end, but we are connected and any point in time, if you want any questions or if you have any such uh, specific requirement for webinar, Calcutta Business School is committed to present contemporary topics in front of the viewers and other educators and uh, prospectives and the students and other uh, collaborators. We are always open to present such kind of webinars. Our top management is always encouraging us to organize those kinds of webinars. So today, what we have experienced, really uh, experienced a kind of very informative, knowledgeable and pertinent and very contemporary webinar on design thinking. We are fortunate to have two of our panelists who spend their valuable time in educating us and throwing and uh, shedding light on certain important issues. I just summarize in a quick fashion, though it's a very uh, wide topic or number of topics they have touched. Professor Bose has beautifully explained the meaning of the, uh, uh, the formal meaning of the design thinking with some example, and he stressed upon empathetic need, diverse requirement of diverse em uh, empowered teams, and the journey is passing through three phases, invention, stabilization, and reinvention, wherein the team has to observe, reflect, and make the things taking and requirement of uh, reading the mind of the customer. And he just gave certain examples of case studies and with the three things, the principle to loop two keys. And he has thrown light on time-based experience, uh, competition, experiential learning, the virtual reality, the augmented duty is a part and parcel of today's product design. And as a matter of fact, today we all are witnessing some innovative startups. I can mention one example, Astrojogi. The days are gone when people have to go to astrologers. It is already available on your smartphone. So you can show your palm and get advices. He also uh, uh, thrown light on, has thrown light on the stages of formal stages of design thinking. That is understanding, that is empathy, high voice, then go to exploration, that is ideating the concepts, and finally building and present the business case. Now, he also uh, focused or he also uh, expressed his expert uh, thinking on the job prospect. In many innovative jobs are coming up, and as a uh, part of the education institute, we are experiencing such kind of job opportunities like content writing like uh, digital marketing, like your, uh, I mean, uh, this Facebook marketing and engaging the consumers through technology. So he has mentioned many things like retail operations, product design, and mostly based on user experience. Now coming to Madam Dutt, uh, Principal Madam Dutta, he has, uh, she has taken us to the ground zero level, taking the example of schools, which is perhaps the basic uh, requirement for design thinking or any innovation or process to start at the early age. She has thrown light on small, small day-to-day -day problem and how schools and institutions are uh, coping up those issues and designing the solutions. Actually taking clue from her uh, thought process, we can say it's a cycle of know what to know why, then to know how and again to know what. So it's a cycle which is always moving on. It's a trial and error uh, approach found uh, grounded on research and strong research and development to come up with that empathetic solution. And she has given many such examples. Perhaps the best example could be the differentiating between online and offline and how the students are and the parents are gradually changing and has changed their orientation towards the online and how the schools are taking examinations, schools are doing everyday interactions. She has given some examples of roll call, small face-to-face -face interactions online, screenshot sharing, and making the outdoor activities very much possible using online. And she has also thrown light on the need of liberalization of the education. Perhaps the mixed session is one of the most important example and very uh, prominent example of that to, uh, and he al she also thrown light on embracing the requirement for embracing change and withstanding prohibiting forces, pressures, peer pressures, and give as much. And finally, she has shown the way to 
embrace such kind of change from school level to institution level, bridging the gap, perhaps to give the exposure to the students, make them aware through different sessions that what are the all, what are kind of opportunities available. I mean, this is such a nice session, it is impossible for me to summarize in a short manner. So I personally have learned many things from sir and madam. Thank you so much. Now it's my turn to request Madam Madhusipal to formally uh, close down the session by vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the entire CBS team, I thank everyone watching us today. We shall keep coming up with uh, new endeavors to enrich students with knowledge. Keep updating us with your feedback. I thank our panelists for today, the students and teachers of Salt Lake Shiksha Niketan and Villa High School for their immense support, especially Lavdeen Ma'am. Thank you, Sanjeev sir, for ideating this invigorating session. And thank you, Secretary General Ma'am, for your constant guidance. With this, we come to the close of the session for today. Please send us your feedback in the Google Sheet provided in the Facebook comment section. You will please leave your name and other details in the same so that we, we will be emailing to the certificates as well. Uh, please follow us for our sessions. Uh, the next session that we have is on importance of social sciences on Friday, 28 January. A lovely man is also there with me. And thank you and wish you a very happy Republic Day in advance. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And keep watching us because you'll have many such sessions. And I would request, you know, all schools to join us. Thank you. Thank you all.